After having seen how to start in Cancer Jobs, let's take a closer look on how to monitor your jobs. We've already seen in the last section that you can use SQ to see the life status of your jobs. Once finished, you could also use S Act to see their status. In this section, we'll focus more on the monitoring regarding the GPU. You can skip it if you don't plan to do anything with the GPU. Before we'll dive into the monitoring, let's quickly recap what we actually need to monitor. We always have a CPU and a GPU. The CPU is our primary processor that manages the copying and controls the GPU. When we run a program, such as training the neural network, we start the program on the CPU. We define the network on the CPU. What happens then that we copy the model over to the GPU? If you've already done this, you might remember the to torch device CUDA command that you need to put after your model. Similarly, you need to copy over the data. On the GPU itself, multiple threads are run. These computations are done in a kernel function that is executed in parallel simultaneously among many threads. Remember, a GPU has many cores, but they all need to run the same code. More specifically, on this we have the same operation, just different data. Once we finish the computation, we copy the results back. The steps that we'll always repeat is, is copy data over, compute, and copy the results back. We have to keep in mind that the bandwidth matters and also the size of our GPU matters. How much can we copy on it? Most importantly for the monitoring, we need to make sure that we compute a lot and not only copy a lot. How would we see this? Well, if we're copying a lot, then our copy process would take a long time and the actual computation on the GPU would be done in a split of a second. There are many tools, frameworks and libraries with which you can monitor your GPU usage. I am going to show you the most simple one that we have. Similar to HTOP, which monitors your CPU processes, I am going to show you how to use NVIDIA for your GPU processes. Again, we are on HLRN ME on the G login 9. Let me start the training script with a batch. I had to wait for a bit, but now we see that the script that I submitted is running with the job ID and we also see on which specific node on the cluster it is running. This is important because I can only log onto nodes where I have jobs running. I SSH'd onto this particular node. Now let's load NVI job. So what can we see in this output? Below we see the processes that are running on the GPU. Right now it's only my process and you see that I'm running the Python Minisu trained or Py script. I'm fully using the CPU. But what about the GPU? We can see the GPU up here. I requested one GPU. And you see the metrics that we want to monitor up here, which is the memory and the utilization. You see that I'm not really using the full capacity of the GPU. I'm only using about 7% of the memory. And even worse, you can see that I'm actually not utilizing it very well because my utilization is really low until the copying is done and then we see a spike in which it actually computes something. How could we possibly fix this? There are several options and we cover them a bit deeper in our live tutorial. However, for now, you might have noticed that I submitted on the grid to share it. This means that I requested a full GPU. However, the size of our network and all the other parameters are designed in such a way that they only need a slice of the network. The first option would be to really think about the partition that you're using. Are you using the correct partition? In this case, I was not. I was putting it on greater shared or do a slide. 
might have surfaced. Secondly, you can also have a look in your code. Right now, my batch size is 32. So to make use of the full capacity of the memory of the GPU, I could easily double it or even take four times as much. You can always look at the paper if you're adapting a neural network what their batch size was. In our case, it was actually 128, and this was even a couple of years ago. Remember, if you increase your batch size, you should also increase your learning rate. This is because if your network sees more data, then of course the error estimate will be also better, so you can be more certain towards a particular step in your loss landscape. Lastly, you can also use profilers. We've included an example trained with Logger. My very last tip concerns checkpointing. Checkpointing means that you save your model and all other parameters regularly. So if something goes wrong, you can just resume the training from the checkpoint. This is important for efficient calculation. Seeing that your script failed after five hours and then needing to restart it from scratch can be quite annoying. This can happen accidentally, so if you have some corrupt images in your dataset or if some data causes an accidental division by zero. There are multiple ways in which you can checkpoint. Let me show you the most simple one. Right now, in our training loop, we always save the model in a file that contains the state of the network. However, to make your training step fully reproducible, you might also want to additionally save any seeds that you've been using or any other state. There are also some great frameworks, such as weight and biases or ammo flow that you can use for checkpointing. After having seen the checkpoint, you are now free to explore the cluster further and maybe also set up your own deep learning workflow. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and fun computing on the cluster.